In the early years of the last decade, the database world had a stable center of gravity. If a company wanted to be taken seriously, it put its crown jewels in a relational database, then built the application around tables, constraints, and careful schema changes. That was the piece. But it was an expensive piece, paid for in slow releases, fragile migrations, and engineers tiptoeing around production. At the same time, the web was getting louder and messier. APIs spoke in JSON, products shipped fast, and executives demanded growth charts that bent upward. A new pitch started winning boardrooms and developer meetups. Stop forcing reality into tables. Store the data the way the app already thinks, and the star of that pitch was MongoDB. MongoDB's core move was simple and seductive. It stores records as documents, and those documents are stored internally as BSON, a binary representation of JSON that is designed for efficient storage and traversal. The company behind it began as TenGen, founded in 2007 by Dwight Merriman, Elliot Horowitz, and Kevin Ryan, veterans of DoubleClick who had felt the pain of scaling systems under heavy load. MongoDB promised speed of development and a flexible schema, and it backed that promise with the kind of operational story engineers crave. Replication via replica sets for redundancy and high availability, and sharding to distribute data across machines when a single box stops being enough. In MongoDB, a write operation is atomic at the level of a single document, which shaped how teams modeled data and justified why they could live without traditional multi-step transactions in many cases. This was not just a technical trend, it was a capital trend. In May of 2012, TenGen announced a $42 million financing round to invest in MongoDB and its growing ecosystem. In October of 2013, the company announced a $150 million funding round. Bloomberg described MongoDB as hitting about a $1.2 billion valuation, selling subscriptions for support at roughly $5,000 per server per year. That is what hype looks like when it matures. It stops being a vibe and becomes a budget line. By the time 2014 arrived, MongoDB was not merely a database. It was a category, a brand, and a career path. Across town, the old empire watched. PostgreSQL was not a company with a single CEO and a quarterly growth mandate. It was a global open source project run by the PostgreSQL Global Development Group. Its weapon was patience. Its advantage was that it already held the boring ground that businesses rely on. SQL, transactions, constraints, joins, and decades of hard lessons about data integrity. It had already started moving into MongoDB's territory before the main battle. In September of 2012, PostgreSQL 9.2 shipped with native JSON support, a clear acknowledgement that developers wanted to store and validate JSON inside a relational database. The message was quiet but dangerous. The relational world could learn the language of the document world without surrendering the rules that keep money safe. Then came the inciting incident. In May of 2014, the PostgreSQL community announced a beta of PostgreSQL 9.4 that included JSON-B, described as a new binary JSON type with higher performance and, crucially, indexing plus functions and operators for manipulating JSON data. On December 18th, 2014, PostgreSQL 9.4 was released, and JSON-B was no longer an experiment. This was the moment the polite boundary between relational and document stopped being enforced by the toolchain. The war was not announced with a press conference. It was announced with a release note. JSON-B mattered because it attacked the real reason MongoDB was winning. MongoDB was not winning only because it could store documents. Plenty of systems can store blobs. MongoDB was winning because it made documents queryable and operable without forcing developers back into the old rituals. PostgreSQL 9.4's release notes describe JSON-B as more capable and efficient for storing JSON, 
allowing faster access to values within a JSON document and faster, more useful indexing of JSON columns. They also spell out the trick. JSONB stores scalar values as appropriate SQL scalar types, and the document structure is pre-parsed instead of being stored as raw text like the original JSON type. A text field is just a suitcase. A pre-parsed structure is a closet with labeled shelves. The closet is slower to build, but once it exists, you stop digging through piles. Under the hood, PostgreSQL engineers did not invent this from nothing. An LWN analysis of the PostgreSQL 9.4 beta explains that JSONB stores semantic JSON in a specialized, compressible tree structure based on the PostgreSQL extension HStore. That detail is not trivia. It tells you the kind of opponent PostgreSQL was. It did not chase fashion. It repurposed battle-tested work from its own ecosystem and aimed it at the new frontier. The people involved were not anonymous. PostgreSQL's official release notes credit Oleg Bartunov, Teodor Sagaev, Alexander Korotkov, Peter Geogagin, and Andrew Dunstan for adding JSONB. This was not a startup pivot. It was a coordinated maneuver by specialists who had spent years thinking about storage formats, indexes, and the ugly edge cases that marketing never mentions. The combatants, then, were not just two databases. They were two strategies for capturing the same budget. MongoDB's strategy was to be the default for modern application development by making development fast and scaling horizontally through sharding. It sold a story where the schema lives with the code and the database stays out of the way. PostgreSQL's strategy was more cynical and more lethal. Let the developers have their documents, but keep the database in charge of truth. In war terms, MongoDB tried to win by opening new territory and recruiting new soldiers. PostgreSQL tried to win by turning the enemy's best tactic into a feature then forcing the battle back onto ground where PostgreSQL already had fortifications. The weaponry was not abstract. It was specific features that translated into money. JSONB plus indexing meant a team could keep a relational core for payments, users, and permissions, while also storing messy, evolving product data as JSONB, then querying inside those documents without giving up SQL. PostgreSQL documentation notes that many JSONB operators can be indexed by JSONB operator classes, and the JSONB ecosystem includes operators designed for containment and existence semantics. Indexing is not academic. Indexing is latency, and latency is conversion rate, and conversion rate is revenue. MongoDB had built its reputation on being fast to build and reasonable to query at scale, helped by replication and sharding. PostgreSQL's counter was to say, keep your apps JSON, but do it in a database that already understands constraints, joins, and transaction semantics across the rest of your system. This is where the business bottom line gets ruthless. Running two databases is rarely a technical choice. It is an organizational tax, two operational playbooks, two backup strategies, two sets of on-call experts, two failure modes that can cascade into each other. If JSONB made it plausible to collapse a document database plus relational database architecture back into a single PostgreSQL deployment for many products, it did not just compete with MongoDB on benchmarks. It competed with MongoDB on headcount. It competed with MongoDB on the number of vendors a CIO must approve. It competed with MongoDB on how many systems an auditor must understand. In capitalism, the simplest stack that meets requirements often wins, not because it is pure, but because it is cheaper to defend. The turning point is often described as if it were instant, like a knockout punch. Real tech wars are slower. Even after PostgreSQL 9.4 shipped, MongoDB still had momentum. On February 2nd, 2015, 
MongoDB issued a press release celebrating that it had overtaken PostgreSQL in the DB engine's ranking, citing a score of 267 and a jump of 16 points. The same release boasted more than 9 million downloads and thousands of customers. That is the grim truth. A better strategic position does not erase an opponent's installed base. It just changes where new decisions go. Tech wars are fought at the margin, one architecture review and one migration plan at a time. The human element sharpened the conflict in 2014 because MongoDB itself was changing shape. On August 5, 2014, MongoDB announced that Dev Idikaria would become president and chief executive officer effective September 3rd, with then-CEO Max Skyerson moving to vice chairman. Leadership changes in a fast-growing company are rarely about ideology. They are about constraints. A venture-backed database company must turn adoption into durable revenue without scaring off the developers who made it famous. That is a balancing act between community and contracts, between open-source distribution and enterprise monetization. PostgreSQL's key contributors faced different constraints. They were not trying to please a board. They were trying to land a feature that would be correct, maintainable, and acceptable to a conservative community. Different pressures, same stakes. The feud over documents was never about whether JSON could live in a database. Both sides agreed it could. The real conflict was over who owned the definition of a modern backend. MongoDB's document model encouraged embedding related data to keep operations atomic at the single document level, reducing the need for distributed transactions in many use cases. MongoDB PostgreSQL's worldview encouraged normalization, explicit relationships, and integrity enforced by the database. Jason B. blurred that line. It let teams keep normalized relational structures where it mattered, then stash irregular data in JSON B where it did not, all under one operational roof. That hybrid posture undercut a clean sales pitch. It made, you must pick a document store sound like a choice from last season. The fallout is easy to misunderstand if it is framed as a winner and a loser. MongoDB did not disappear. It adapted and kept growing, eventually reaching the public markets. On October 18, 2017, MongoDB priced its initial public offering at $24 per share, and the offering raised $192 million, according to MongoDB and multiple financial news reports. That is not a casualty. That is a surviving power that found a way to translate technical adoption into financial legitimacy. But PostgreSQL's JSON B move changed the industry's default instincts. It made it harder for any pure document store to claim that relational databases could not evolve. It pushed the market toward a more cynical, procurement-friendly question. Can one system handle enough of the messy stuff that the company does not need to bet on a second database category? So where is the money, explicitly, in this war? Start with the venture capital. MongoDB raised tens of millions, then hundreds of millions, and was discussed in terms of billion-dollar valuation years before its IPO. That money funded sales, marketing, and the enterprise push that turns popularity into recurring revenue. Bloomberg's description of subscriptions costing about $5,000 per server per year captures the core incentive. Every production server was a potential annuity. PostgreSQL, by contrast, is open source. So the revenue opportunity shifted to support vendors, cloud providers, and internal platform teams. In that model, the profit is often negative spend. Fewer licenses, fewer systems, fewer specialized hires. The closest thing to a cash register is the avoidance of paying one. The lesson is not that one database is morally superior. The lesson is that technology categories are fragile when their unique value can be absorbed by a general purpose platform. MongoDB built a new habit in developers. Think in documents, ship fast, scale out. PostgreSQL watched that habit, then offered a way to keep it without paying the full price of switching empires. 
JSONB did not end document databases. It ended the easy certainty that document databases were the only modern choice. In a winner-take-all market, the most dangerous competitor is not the one that copies everything. It is the one that copies just enough to remove the reason for a separate purchase. PostgreSQL 9.4 did exactly that, and the ripple it created is still visible every time a team says, with a shrug that sounds like wisdom, we can just do it in Postgres.